So today we're with easily my favorite comic book artist ever, Eisner Award winner, best known for his fearless run on Daredevil, his amazing run on Spider-Man, and his marvelous run on Mythos. He is the Bret Hart of comic art, Mr. Paulo Rivera. How are you, sir? I'm doing, I'm doing great. Thanks for the intro. <laughs> yeah. I, I wrote that in my head like seven times over, so I thought it would be a little bit funny. So longtime listeners of this podcast probably remember back when it was a blog. And it was when it was a blog that I started this journey to try to collect every cover you've ever done. So as of time of this recording, the collection is at 325. Wow. I I didn't even know I had done that many. Yeah. So that is unique cover. So I'm not even counting the like covers that they used again for like hard covers. All of these are unique with the exception of maybe 10 of them are second prints and third prints. And then, of course, with Dynamite turning everything into a black and white and a virgin, I got all those as well. Okay, I was going to say, because 325 does sound more than I I think I've actually done. It's it's been a while since I actually counted, but... If you boil it down to just unique covers, you're about 282. Okay. All right. That's still more than I thought, but all all right. How many companies do you think you've put out uh, covers for? How many different companies? Well, there aren't that many. One, two, three, four, five. I'd say under 10. So seven 14. or eight. Really? 14 companies, yes. And there's one that's not on that list, which hopefully we'll get to talk about. Uh, that shocks me. But yeah, 14 different companies. And that's counting one that's technically dead and one that <laughs> is sub- a subsidiary of another. But a devil's due. Oh, what did I do for them? Devil's Do was the, the only cover you did for Devil's Do. It's technically your Army of Darkness cover. Uh, it was a oh, okay. publication. Oh, okay. I was counting that as, uh, as Dynamite. Dynamite. Yeah, yeah, okay. I got De- you. At the time, Devil's Do owned the rights to Army of Darkness. So I counted as Devil's Do in my, in my gotcha. catalog. Okay, that makes, that makes more sense. So the first cover you ever did, 63, yeah. Yeah. Which later got turned into a movie poster for Iron Man 3. Yeah, no, that that was, I mean, what was funny about that cover is, you know, it was my very first, but then that would be 2002. You know, they started working on the movie and I heard that they had that poster up in the Marvel Studios offices. Like some, you know, someone told me that it was hanging in there. And I was like, well, that's cool. Like, and you know, Iron Man wasn't even a movie yet. So then when they finally turned it into an actual poster for Iron Man 3, I was like, all right, somebody did see it. <laughs> yeah, so it's real. Yeah, yeah, they, they did a great job. I mean, you can look at the two side by side. and can tell that one was definitely influenced by the other, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, that's the like most direct thing I, I think I've I've seen with like a couple exceptions. But yeah, I mean, they were definitely looking at it. They did, so the only other one that I can think of is for the same movie, they did a Barry Windsor Smith, Iron Man issue number three, like same cover swipe sort of situation. Very close to it as well. This next one is kind of a weird question because it might not even be a real thing. It just might be a trick of the eye. So I'm not going to talk about the fact that you set yourself on fire for this because even though you grew up in Florida, you shouldn't have had to. But did you know there were two separate covers for this issue? Well, first of all, I want I want to set the sec- the record straight. That was the that was an April Fool's joke. You didn't actually set yourself on fire. I did <laughs> no, I, I I found I found pictures of a stuntman who did set himself on fire, and I I just painted in my face. Okay, that's so. If you look okay. if you look back if you look back on my blog and see what the post date is. It's it's April first. I I can't remember what year that was. Is that uh, public knowledge that it was a joke? Other than the fact that you probably mentioned it before. I mean, every every year, you know, it'll it'll make the rounds again, and I, I will on on Twitter, you know, set the record straight. But I also I love the fact that people think that I actually did that, which is kind of why I did it. So I'm I'm really happy that that, that rumor is still going around. Good. I will try to keep that life then. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's. There's two covers to this. Yes, indeed. Did you have anything to do with the second one? Yeah, so I painted the first one, which is on your right, assuming that uh, everything's not switched around with Zoom. That one was painted 
at the same size as the rest of the series, which was, I think I actually went smaller for, for uh, Ghost Rider. I'm going to say eight by 12 was, was the size. Everything was, was shrunk down. So Mythos Hulk and Mythos Ghost Rider were both painted at that size because I wanted something that could fit on my scanner because doing, you know, Mythos X-Men, the, the first book, I was happy with the artwork, but I had a very difficult time getting the artwork into the computer and to Marvel. So I spent an entire month after, you know, after everything was painted, I spent an entire month just Photoshopping it, you know, the original artwork to make it look like it actually looked in real life. So to skip all that extra work, I started working smaller so I could scan. And on that particular one with Mythos, Mythos Ghost Rider, that's when I moved, made the move back to color. I painted it, I wasn't happy with it. And I asked them if I could repaint it, if they would, if they would publish it. And they said, yeah, if you can finish it by tomorrow. <laughs> and, and so I did, I painted it in, you know, I already knew what I wanted to do and I already had a pretty good, you know, I'd already done it once. So I painted it big 16 by 24 on Masonite in acrylic wash. And I painted it, you know, I mean, I pulled an all nighter to finish it, but I think I finished it in like 20 hours of, of painting. I don't know. It's, it's been a long time since I did it, but you know, very quickly. And I was much happier with it because, you know, this was after I had painted the entire book. So I had a much better idea of how to make the skull look the way I wanted it to. This is the one that you did the all nighter on. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the one I painted quickly and big. And the other one is on paper and small. And I was trying to make it look like when I started, I was trying to make the fire, you know, really look like a skull on fire, but that's not actually how I paint him now. I just try and make it look, you know, both like a skull and also like real fire, but not how a real skull on fire would look, if that makes any sense. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, because a real skull on fire would just be dark. Just for your edification or whatnot, this is literally 40 times more valuable than this. Oh, uh, so that one, oh, I see. It's the not for resale. So yeah. This so this only available with FYE pre-ordered with the Ghost Rider movie. Okay. That's what it was. Yeah. So they got, it was actually also reproduced at a small size. And I think it was packaged with the Ghost Rider DVD. And in that case, it also used the original cover that I did. Cause that, that was the one that got sent out early on, you know, both for solicits and, you know, instances like that. So the one that finally made it to print, you know, for most comic book stores was, was the second one, but the other one was already out in the wild. Yeah. It was, it's really hard to find now. It's super hard to find now. It's, it's <laughs> do you count, do you count now. that as two covers? I do count it as two okay. covers because there's a variation. Uh, the reason, the main reason I was asking is because in the hardcover of this, this counts as a third cover, uh, because this, the fact that they reprint this without this cover is blasphemy. So wait, they, what do they reprint? They've reprinted Mythos in a softback with a different cover with, I forget really? who the artist is. Yeah. Oh, 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 that, cause that one is a, I don't think that one's all me. I think no, that's. No, no, it's only one or two stories from the Mythos. Yeah. Yeah. Cause for a while there, they were going to kind of continue the series, uh, but that never really like never took off. So yeah, the, that one, it's not just all me. It's, it's me and I think Marco Djurjevic. Yes. And he did the cover for that. The song yeah, for that. that makes sense. And they have, they have your first cover as the cover. Yeah. Inside. Yeah. In, in the back one. Yeah. It's still, it's still in the Marvel archive. So, uh, you know, if, if someone doesn't know what they're looking for, they would have no idea like which one to use. Yeah. So that makes sense. So this next bit, some of my favorite covers that you've ever done, and definitely they're starting to get hard to find and starting to become more valuable. I'm a big Wally Wood fan. And oh, nice. did these wonderful Guardians of the Galaxy variants on top of, I count this as part of your Wally Wood collection. Is your, <laughs> hey, yeah, for, for my good friend, Ryan Brown. Yeah. yeah. Now, to my knowledge, from my research, none of these are direct cover swipes. So just inspiration from yeah. Wally, right? Yeah, just, just inspiration. You know, I, I was looking, you know, I've got my, my favorites. And uh, I tend to always take from the same ones, but none of them were like the same, same composition or anything, just, just the same overall feel. I think one of them is going to be turned into a, a print, 
pretty soon from gray matter art, but I'm not, I'm not sure when, when that's going to happen. Don't tell my wallet that. Don't tell my wallet that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, um, so do you, I'm, I'm really curious now because these were all one in 50 incentive variants. So that makes them harder to find on top of the fact that they're just amazing and well sought after. Do you have any say in that? Like, are you, do you get to determine whether or not they're one in fifties or you just submit the art and they just do what they want with it? Yeah. I mean, when it comes to variants, like I don't have any idea how it works. I, I think anything I have learned, you've told me, <laughs> you know, like I'll have something up on my site and you'll be like, hey, it's worth a lot more than you've got it listed for. And I'll be like, oh, okay. Yeah. Otherwise I'd have no idea. And I, I, it's not even something I think to search for before I, I post something. You know, and I do, I have a lot of back issues that I keep meaning to put up, you know, either on my, my store or eBay, but I just never get a chance to. So when you do this one, this one's the most valuable out of the three, because it's the first time Angela appears in the Marvel Universe. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, so I did not even know mm -hmm. that. I remember like when that was a big deal, but I, I didn't, I didn't know that it was on that cover. Yeah. All right. Like, I think I've still got some of those. Yeah, they're, they're roughly between 50 and 100, depending on the day. This next one, these, this next series of covers, I absolutely love. And when I decided to do this challenge to collect all of your covers, my main goal was to do it in the wild. So I wanted to go to every comic book store that I could and find as many covers as I could. And I got close to 75% that way. These sons of bitches were the reason why I had to start going online because they're incredibly hard to find. They're not super valuable, but they're just super hard to find. And it's your dark horse oh. 20 run. Yeah. And these are so gorgeous. Like this Captain Mendel oh, thank is you. easily my favorite, but it's such a different style than you usually do. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I had a lot of fun with those because it, it was, I've always enjoyed that kind of poster work. You know, I just, I like it just as a look. So when they gave me the okay to, to try something like that and to try it for an entire series, you know, it was hard, but I, I definitely enjoyed the process. And like one of the really cool things about these is uh, if, if you look at your whole collection, obviously your art style has changed from 2003 to now. And this is like a really nice snapshot of a, a specific time. But there's some covers that kind of correlate with it, like this Captain America one yeah. kind of is in a similar vein. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah it, these it's, ones... it's all coming from the same place of the, you know, just my love for, for old school poster. I did, I did a little bit of that for the more recent Punisher series. Punisher uh, Soul, yeah, I was going to pull that one out too, but I'm packed up for Baltimore Comic Con and Garthiness is going to be there. So. What, what's that? Uh, Garthiness is going to be at Baltimore Comic Con and he oh, nice. wrote the issue. So I'm going to try to get yeah, him yeah. signed. So. And then, so the inspiration behind those was just old poster work. Yeah, pre pretty much. I just, I love the look and I don't even know like how they're made. I think they're like lithographs, you know, and th there's a pretty wide range, but that's the kind of stuff I like. It's, it's very graphic. It's very colorful, but also muted. So I just, I've just always liked that work and I tried to emulate it for a while or any, anytime I get a chance or that it makes sense within the story, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, so the main reason I was curious about that, because you did Two Past Midnight, these covers yep. in here are more of your traditional style. And yeah. It was right around the same time. So that, that's, yeah, that, that's, that's right when I, it's right when I left Marvel. So 2012, 2013. And I had just moved to uh, California, which is where I am now. And so I, I was just, I was getting a lot of different offers from, uh, you know, places I had never worked for before. Because up until that point, it was pretty much only Marvel, you know, with the exception of Devil's Due and Dynamite. But yeah, so it was re really me just trying to find like what I wanted to do and who I wanted to work for. And fortunately, I got, you know, a lot of opportunities. And Dark Horse has been good to you with your Hellboy stuff and, and whatnot. And that's yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, well. they basically told me, you know, it, whenever I want to do Hellboy, I, I can't. <laughs> so it's, Please, it's always a nice, it it's always a nice treat. So you don't do a lot of cover swipes. You don't do a lot of cover homages Do all the research that I've done. You've only really ever done two. Well, it, it's funny you mentioned that because I just did one. Yeah. Yeah. For uh, Spidey's 60th anniversary. So I don't know when that'll be coming out because it was done for license. Mm -hmm. So it'll probably be a cover eventually, 
but I, with those ones, like I never know when it's going to, the last time I did something for them, it ended up being uh, Amazing Spider-Man 15, I think. Uh, we'll, we'll, get we'll get yeah, there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> which is also going to be a print, a print soon. Oh, yes, that's exciting. But yeah, so the only two cover swipes, you, to my knowledge, that you've ever done, with the exception of the one coming out, is for the Avenging Spider-Man 15. You did a bunch of them yeah. in the tentacles. And yeah. then probably my favorite cover swipe ever, just because I'm a big Ditko fan, is the Superior oh, yeah. Team-Up Annual. Like, when it was... I love the just the slight difference you made where Spidey's facing versus facing away yeah i just this is yeah I yeah because i mean you know it's it's this weird i mean that was a weird time for spidey so i just i had a lot of fun with those covers because it was always you know how do you make spidey somewhat sinister <laughs> you know like pretending to be a hero but but not a hero so yeah i had a lot of fun with those i think my favorite of that was the the claw machine one. Oh, the claw machine one that was yeah so that, that was that was probably my favorite i kind of wish i had gotten to paint that one but I, I that was something i think i was the monthly cover artist so i didn't have time for you know painted painted stuff which always yeah, takes only at missed, least two or three times as long you only miss one book in that whole run i think it was issue you skipped issue 11 i think i may be wrong on the issue number but you did every other cover of that run. And I always find it weird when I'm going through my boxes because there's just one that's not there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've done that a couple times. I think on uh, Black Panther 2, I missed I missed one. Because something always comes up and I, I can't do it. Well, Black Panther, all those are painted, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that should have informed me right there that there was no way I could get it done. I, did, I, had, to, I had to quit that gig because I just... I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. I can't remember what it was at the time, but it's always something. But they're all beautiful covers, and one of them is just completely shot up in value. Uh, issue number seven, because it's the first appearance of who is to be the villain in the next Black Panther movie. So. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, Zenith or Zenith or I forget his name, but yeah. I have, have to take a look at that because I I didn't I didn't finish that painting. I I got it like you know. 75% of the way there and then I just had to hit the deadline so I finished the rest digitally so I still have like the unfinished painting like right below me maybe I should finish it <laughs> yeah. uh, that's happened on a couple of different painted painted pieces so since you mentioned it before amazing spider-man 15 this beautiful cover wasn't the first time it was printed on a comic book Really, where else did they use it? This is from the 30-year anniversary box set of Panini in Italy. Okay, yeah, I know Panini. Yeah. This uh, came out about two years before Amazing Spider-Man uh, 15. I had to like use Google Translate to talk to someone to sell me just this because I didn't want to buy the whole box. Well, why, why is it in English? It's not. Oh, uh, il più grande superiore del mondo. <laughs> yeah, so like on the inside, it's, I think it's because it's, it's like, the 30th anniversary. Okay, all right. So that's why. Yeah, so I, I like had to like have a long conversation with someone on eBay about just, oh, because I had like three of the boxes. I didn't want to buy the whole box. Just sell me the comic. And now those boxes are like $300 a piece. So <laughs> this, this is a one that's up there. But yeah, yeah I, was, I, had was, no, I, I had no idea about that. I, I actually, I just redid that cover for the print. I added some birds in the background because I, I thought it felt kind of empty. Because I, I did that, I painted Spidey and then the background is painted digitally. So it's two pieces of art. So so Spidey could be moved around if they needed. Well, like shrunk or, or whatnot. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, anytime it's for licensing, well, not anytime, but a lot of times when it's for licensing, they just want a, a bunch of different options because they don't know how it's going to be used yet. I think they did a good job with it putting smack dab in the middle. Yeah. Um, so milestone issues, you've done a couple, like you've done a lot of number ones. You've done a lot of number ones. Yeah, I, they, they seem to, it, it's weird. I, I'll get an email from Tom Brevoort. He's like, we've got a number one and we, <laughs> we wanted to offer it to him. I'm like, all right, yeah. sure. Like Magneto, the only one you did in the whole series is Magneto, but I have three copies of it because it went to three prints. So yeah yeah I, I wish that's another one i wish i had painted because i i thought that's one of my like stronger concepts but i actually didn't 
I didn't like the execution that much. Like I always felt like I, I should have done a better job. Like the idea deserved a better rendering than I than I did, which you know it happens sometimes. And then sometimes I have a really bad idea, but I go to town on the render. <laughs> goes both ways so you actually did uh a big milestone issue for marvel only the second series ever to reach 500 and this oh is yeah your third cover ever yeah yeah and i did that while i was still in school yeah my my art dealer he has that it's not for sale but he he has it i i think just uh, he's got a comic book store in texas i think it's there i hope it's still there so i have to go to that store so i can see it in <laughs> Um, yeah. Did you know that it was going to be for the 500th issue or you just submitted it in? I, this was a while ago. So this was 2000. Was a long time ago. Two. It was 2002. Yeah. I think Tom Brevoort teased me with the, the idea of it could be for 500, if, if I recall correctly. So he said, if it's good, we will use it for 500. And so th that's, I was like, Okay. Okay. You know, I'm a, I'm like a young kid. Like I, I, I gotta make this good. And uh, that was one of the one times they, they had me do some edits. Uh, cause he didn't, he didn't like the way I painted invisible woman. And I think one, no, he had, no, it was a different cover. They had me change the thing on that one. I think that was it. So yeah, I, the, he liked it and they went with it. And of course, you know, I was super excited and it, you know, I, I was a big fan of Mark Wade. I hadn't met him at that point, but I was just, I thought it was super cool that it got to be on on his book. And then eventually you would do your run on Daredevil. Yeah. Yep. Uh, which brings me to... <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, you did the character design for Kyle, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I actually came up with the that arc uh, of like, you know, I wanted Spot to come back, but I wanted him... Because I just, I loved, I loved that fight, you know? And I, I love what, fight. what Mark, you know, when I'm, when I'm reading that script for the first time, I'm like, all right, this guy gets it. Like, as soon as it's in the script, it's like Daredevil looks at him and he looks like Swiss cheese. And I'm like, ah, oh, that's brilliant. And uh, so I just, you know, I had a fun time just rendering that. And so I wanted to do it again. And so I, I came up with just that character. Now, originally I, I made it so that it was just the spot coming back. It was all Mark Wade who you know, made it into a, a totally new character who was just you know stealing Spot's power for a, a heist or whatever. So yeah, I, and that's unfortunately that's when I left Marvel. So I should have stayed for that run at least. And I actually did do I think four pages of the first issue of that run. The four pages at least oh, it does. Really worked out. Mm -hmm. Oh okay, nice. Yeah, so I, I never, you know, that's, that's about when I left. I wish I'd stayed just a little bit longer, but I also, I don't think I could have done it because that was just right around the time I was going to move to California and there was just no way I, I could have kept up with a, a monthly deadline at all. It's th that whole series, all your covers in the series are amazing. Issue 14 with the braille that says Doom on Doom's neck. <laughs> that was so good. Um, that, I I felt I felt pretty happy with myself when I when I thought about that because I was looking at the, you know the big it's actually have a doom mask and I was like yes you know like five people will see it but because <laughs> the first time I saw that cover I was like oh this is kind of like a homage to Gene Colan's issue thirty seven where he's on the front in front of Doom's face mm -hmm. I thought that's all it was and then when I noticed that he's reading. Is he actually reading Doom? And then I looked up Braille to read Doom. So yeah, that was that was mind blowing. And so the next couple covers, I just wanted to go over just because they're easily my favorite covers that you've ever done. And then we're actually gonna, at the end of this podcast, we're gonna be giving away some covers and oh, I have wow. specific reasons for the covers I'm giving away. So this is this was my favorite cover for a very very long time until you beat it recently. But this cover, oh nice, yes. yeah, is so amazing. Thank um, you. Did you intend to do the four with Surfer and Black Bolt, or was that just a, a happy coincidence? What do you mean? Like, oh, like, like with Surfer the, uh, this board, it makes a four. That, yes. <laughs> <laughs> totally meant to do that. <laughs> my, my biggest regret is not getting a copy of that signed by Stan Lee, because I think that with a, or the silver signature by Stan Lee would look absolutely amazing. Yeah. This next one, 
hang, usually that hangs above my television, but I brought it in here because I thought it looked nice for the interview. But obviously this wonderful, wonderful cover that took you probably forever in a day. Looking back on it now, I, it took me 70 hours, which to me now seems fast for, for what, for what all was involved. But, you know, it, it's one of those covers where, you know, a lot adds up, you know, a lot of little strokes add up and it's not a lot of, um, you know, like right now I'm painting Ripley from Alien and like, it's just her face, but it's taking forever because every single thing matters. And with that stuff, you know, if I mess up a little bit on, on one stroke, it's not going to hurt the, the overall picture. So I think that's why it, it you know, was faster than, than usual. I think my um, favorite thing about this entire cover is when you did Al Red, you did it like he does his name. Yeah. Like all Red. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I couldn't do that for everybody, but I, I tried to, if they were a big influence on me, you know, I already know, I know what their signature looks like because I've been searching it out my entire life. So if, if they were a big influence on me, I definitely tried to mimic their, their signature. Uh, so that one you said was 70 hours? I think so, which again, like that sounds very fast to me now because I just did a painting that took 70 hours and it didn't have that much detail in it. This next one took you 127 hours. Can you guess what one it is? I, I did know at one point. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, one of the only ones that you've gotten two, two covers for, which this is, this will probably, and you're, you're probably going to say no, this will probably go down as one of the greatest comic covers of all time. Oh, without a doubt. Just the, the way you did all the characters on it, just the, the the Peter Parker holding the Marvel Comics number one. Like this is genius level stuff. And by far my favorite detail is the Nightcrawler tail at the bottom. Oh yeah. <laughs> that that's my favorite little oh he, he fit them in there just just at the, the tail end. Um, yeah. The, well, I mean that one was that again, that was Brevoort. He just he called me up well he, and just he basically described what he wanted, you know. He was just like the whole universe, Peter Parker reading Marvel number one in front. And I was like, all right, <laughs> that's going to take a while, but I, I, I'd be happy to do it. So you only have one magazine cover. Uh, before I get to the final two that I had here before the giveaway, you only have one magazine cover and you probably didn't even know it was printed. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're Abraham Lincoln. This was for President's Day online. Yeah, thing? yeah. And they I, ended up printing it. I can't which remember if I ever saw that. To hunt down. I don't know if I've seen that before. I can't remember. They, I felt like they used it. What was that? I, I think Andy McDonald did the interiors. No, I can't. I can't recall. It's been too long. Yeah, that that one came out a long time ago. But I, I the funny thing about it is, it's not your usual signature. It's like your commission signature. So oh, it's, yeah. it was like a commission, but I think they, they used it for a digital only story and then they just threw it on the magazine because I think they just had it lying around. By far your best Daredevil cover, and that's saying something. Um, <laughs> Stacey variant. I, this cover, the first time I saw it, I fell on the floor. I was so beyond excited about it. One, Yellow Daredevil is best Daredevil. Two, single D is better than double D. Love you, Wally, but no. And the fact that Spidey's on it, and I, I have a pug at home, so the fact, at my parents' house, so the fact that you have a pug on this cover, well, yeah, this that's, cover just blew me away. That right. is my uh, my brother-in-law's late, late pug, Irvy. He was, that was my tribute to him. But yeah, I, I had a lot of fun with, with that cover. I had, I had wanted to do something for a long time with, you know, his head in front of a, a, a NYC sewer thing, so... Once they gave me the option, I was like, I, I know what I'm doing. But, yeah. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this was your first cover for this company. And it's my favorite comic book company. This is your first cover was EXO, correct? I can't remember. I think this came out right before Unity did. So. Yeah, it's probably, that could be my, my first with them. I can't remember exactly. But yeah, that, that's, a pretty good, that's a pretty good bet. And it, what's funny about that is at that time, I thought EXO was wasn't golden blue. I thought he was orange. So really? all my, yeah, all my early EXO stuff, he's orange. Like, <laughs> like I just, I don't know. I don't know why. I, I guess I was remembering from like bad color from the nineties or, or what, but 
I was gonna ask because like when you came on to Valiant, did you know about the '90s stuff or was it all new to you? I mean, I knew it through Wizard magazine. Like, I knew who the characters were, but I had never read a single Valiant book. Warren Simons, you know, he he was my editor briefly at Marvel, and so he's the one that convinced me back in I guess it was 2012 to go and do some covers for them and then eventually do the Valiant. So yeah, it was just him selling me on on the properties and and saying, you know, we can we can make something good out of it. Yeah. But yeah, I'm I'm really glad I did cuz in the beginning like I wasn't sure. I was like fresh out of Marvel. I didn't know quite what I was quite what I was going to do with my career at, at that point. So it was a little bit of a risk, but I'm I'm glad I took it. Yeah, the Valiant when you got announced for the Valiant, I I almost fainted because like, there's no way that this is happening like <laughs> i was beyond excited and pages 11 and 12 from issue 4 hang in my bedroom as much as my fiance doesn't like it i went to the panel at new york comic-con when that was all being announced and i asked a question at the end of the panel and you like sat forward to answer it and then no one answered it and they just ended the panel and that was where shadow man because he had been missing forever and like no one moved on the whole panel and then you like rocked forward and then just rocked back and they're like, all right, have a good day, everyone. I'm just like, oh, can't anyone answer this? Um, but apparently the Valiant was supposed to have a different name. Are you allowed to say what it is now? I don't even remember. Yeah, apparently Matt Kent and Warren were talking about it. And I want to guess that it was going, going to be secret weapons and then they just use secret weapons for something else. But if I knew that, I have forgotten. I don't yeah, that's just speculation I don't recall. on my behalf. From being like a, a long time Valiant fan. I mean, yeah, they they had that plan before I got there. You know, like they didn't they didn't have the entire series written because I I was waiting for that last script. But I think they had the first two, and I think by the time I got it, they were pretty sure it was going to be called the Valiant. But I, again, it's been a while. Yeah. It was an amazing series. The fact that it didn't win the Harvey when it was nominated just. <laughs> that was annoying but so the three comics that i'll be giving away over this podcast through different avenues are your three rarest comics the most valuable comic currently that you've do, done a cover of is your spider gwen gwen stacy uh, ghost spider number one yep that is your most valuable comic currently what does that go for right around 300 bucks really Man, yeah, I yeah. gotta get in. I gotta get into comics. This one took me forever to find, and when I finally found it, it was cheap. But it's it's really really hard to find. It is rare. It is the sketch variant to your uh, Star Wars Force Awakens number six. I think uh, it's a it, one in is seventy five. It, isn't that the one you told me was was too? I had it for too cheap. Yes. Yeah. This is okay. one of the ones I told you you had for too cheap. So uh, I, I think I still sold out of it. I, I can't remember if I have any more. I feel like I still have one more, but I, again, I can't remember. Yeah, this is super rare, super hard to find. Not crazy valuable, but it's it's a hundred dollar bill all day. So we're going to be giving away one of those because I have two other copies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this next one is is super rare, really hard to find. It took me a long time to track it down, and it's I don't think you intentionally did it, but you kind of homage an old warrior issue, and that is your Miracle Man number three variant is a Old Warrior issue, issue number 15, has a kind of a similar concept with uh, Miracle Man flying around uh, the line and I. Uh, huh. I'll have to, I'll have to look at that because I, I, I don't recall. Uh, it's, a, it's a similar kind. It doesn't look nearly identical, but they, they definitely okay. look similar. Now, this one's super hard to find, too, and I have two copies of this, so we're giving one of these away. Nice. And then this one does not exist. If you look on many websites, it, it just doesn't exist. And it is hands down the crown jewel of my collection. And I got a spare. Can you guess what it is? I have no idea. I hounded you for this a long time ago. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Kick-ass number three, the one in 50 variant for 70. I, I do have a spare. My friend who got it for me got it signed by you in New York. And she said that when she asked you to sign it you asked her if it was mine because i let you know that i had found it neither of these copies were purchased originally in america both of these came from england oh okay uh, this is this is like a ridiculously hard to find book this would probably be your most valuable comic if people knew that it existed um <laughs> and i i found out why it's so hard to find why is that so it was put on uh, final order cutoff. The, so 
when comic book stores ordered the variants, this is one of 50, then it got added to the final one cutoff. So it wasn't with the initial order. So even if they qualified for it, most stores didn't get it. I see. Insanely hard to find. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, I, yeah, I completely blanked on one other question. So the one company that you haven't worked for that I'm shocked you haven't worked for, you have no covers from IDW. I don't. I feel like I got one offer one time, but I didn't, I wasn't able to do it. They have Ninja Turtles, right? Yes. This is why I'm so surprised. Yeah. Yeah. I think I had wanted to, and I, I, I couldn't do it for some reason. And the other one I, I wanted when they got Usagi, I, I still want to do an Usagi cover. So I'm hoping I can do, you know, do one eventually. That would, uh, that would be amazing. You doing Usagi would be absolutely amazing. Yeah, because I, I mean, I, I, that's, that's actually the only comic that I buy regularly. Yeah, well, let's so make that happen. is there any other series that you haven't, any other characters you haven't done that you would like to do in the future? You know, I, I feel like in my time at Marvel, I never got to do enough X-Men. Like, you know, I'd, every once in a while I would, but never like for any of the main books. Like here, here and there, you know, I'd do a cover or whatnot, but I would love to do like an X-Men run. But at the same time, like I know me and I, <laughs> I, I have a tough enough time, you know, when it's a single character book, like I can only imagine, you know, what, what I am better at is if it's just not stop fighting like that for me is like super easy. I can just do it all day. And anytime two characters like sit down to eat and talk, like everything just crashes down <laughs> and I just like overthink everything. So uh, maybe a team book, you know, it, it might be my secret weapon. I don't know. I'll have to try it someday. One of the fun facts about what you just mentioned is you have three X-Men covers that don't have any X-Men on. What is wrong with me? <laughs> <laughs> well, two of them were for the 45th anniversary of the Fantastic Four. So you had that Madman inspired one. And then gotcha. there was the Mole Man, Namor, uh, Annihilus one. Right. Um, and then there's one with Hobgoblin on the cover for uh, Spider-Man Villains Month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, yeah, that, that's always a problem. Like, when I agree to those, I never know what they're going to go on the covers of. And so I don't find out until I get my comps or people start, you know, asking me to sign them. Uh, so I never have any idea, like, what it's going to be a variant for, like, until it's too late. Uh, but, yeah, it'd be nice to do some, some real X-Men at, at some point. But we'll see. Uh, is there this interview is going to take a little while to to come out so is there anything you want to plug in the future right now yeah uh, let's see the last thing i just finished up was a lot of fun it was uh joe quinones is on batman 89 he did the pencils and then i painted over his pencils for one of the upcoming covers number six yeah so i, I don't know i don't know when it'll be revealed i think they already got the um, solicitations, but it, it wasn't finished yet. So they got like a color study, which doesn't look, you know, as good as it should. But we're real happy with the way it ended up. You know, Joe and I, we've collaborated before, and this is probably my favorite thing we've done so far. Uh, the Howard the Duck cover is so good with you. <laughs> Squirrel Girl. Uh, that was, that was a lot of fun. So I've been itching to do something, you know, again with him since then. And this was like, you know, it was just the perfect, perfect thing to do. You know, Joe's, Joe's been trying to do this book since I met him. So <laughs> <I'm awesome. laughs> it's, it's, it's about time. It's about time. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate the talk. Uh, thank you for letting me pick your brain about covers in your, if, that you've done in my collection. I, I don't think you know how much I appreciate this. Thank you so much, sir. Oh, it's my, my pleasure. I'm just, I'm glad you've made it, you know, it's, uh, your mission to get all of them. And it also, you know, it reminds me of things that I've either never knew or completely forgotten. So I appreciate you jogging my memory for sure. So before you go through your comps and throw them all up on eBay, just send me an email and I'll let you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will do. <laughs> uh, great talking to you, sir. Thank you so much. Pleasure to talk to you as always.